Grizel Hume lived near the border between Scotland and England. She was the oldest of 18 brothers and sisters and was called after her mother. Her parents loved her and she showed herself to be far wiser than is usually expected of a child. She grew up during the times of persecution and her parents were faithful to God. When she was nine, her father, who was called Sir Patrick, went to London to complain to the King. He told him about how brutal the government in Scotland were in using soldiers to persecute the people. He also complained to the Scottish government themselves, saying that what they were doing was illegal. But they didn't listen. They simply put him in prison for a short while. Although Grizel was only ten years old, she was so wise and careful that her parents could rely on her to go on secret missions. Because she was a girl, she was less likely to be suspected. She was very clever in keeping herself and her secrets safe, and in finding out ways of succeeding in her secret tasks. Her father's friend Robert Bailey of Jerviswood was in prison because he had rescued a minister from government troops. Grizel was sent on the long journey to Edinburgh, walking all the way. She had to see if she could get in to see Robert Bailey. She had been given a secret note that she was to give him when no one was looking. Somehow she found a way of getting into the prison and gave him the secret note from her father and took a reply back home. These were dangerous times and Grizel was brave in going on these secret missions. A few years later, her father was put in prison once more. They moved him from Edinburgh to Dumbarton. This was a very long way from home, over a hundred miles. But during the year that he was imprisoned there, Grizel walked all the way several times to go and see him, bringing him her comfort and important information. By the time that Grizel was a teenager, the government decided to arrest Sir Patrick, her father. Troops came on two occasions to arrest him, but they didn't find him at his house. It was clear that he would have to find a hiding place. He decided to go to the family burying place, which was an underground vault at the local church, and only about a mile from the family home. Only Grizel, her mother, and one other man knew of the hiding place. Anyone else could be questioned by the government soldiers, and might tell the secret. They even managed to get him a bed that he could use there. They had to take it there during the night so that nobody could see. It was completely dark in the burial place, and not at all a pleasant place to be. But her father had memorised the Psalms in Latin, and he found it helpful to repeat them now, when he could not read in the darkness. Someone had to take him food and drink each day. Hubert Grizel was best for this job. Each night, when it got to midnight, she made her way to the churchyard. Many children and young people would find it a scary thing to go stumbling over gravestones at dead of night. There was a lantern she could use for candlelight. It can still be seen today in a museum. But she had to be careful not to attract attention. She had to listen out for any soldiers or anyone else. You can imagine that every rustle of a leaf, or breaking of a twig, or any other noise would make her freeze with fright. The minister lived next to the church, but he was not a faithful servant of Christ. Instead, he supported the government in their cruelty. The very first night Grizel made her way through the graveyard, the minister's dogs began to bark loudly. She was afraid she would be discovered. The next day, she persuaded her mother that they should speak to the minister and tried to get him to think that the dogs had gone mad and out of control. He listened to them and began to agree that this must be the case, and so he got rid of them, so there were no more barking dogs to disturb her. Each night she stayed as long as she could with her father in order to keep him company. Perhaps he spoke to her about the psalms he had been remembering. 
but she had to get home before it got light and before people started to get up. It wasn't always straightforward to get food for her father. None of the servants and her brothers and sisters knew what was going on. The only way to get food was by secretly taking food off her plate at dinner and putting it into her lap. Her father liked to eat sheep's head. While the children were eating their soup, she got a large part of a sheep's head off the table into her lap. Her brother Alexander, who was just nine, eventually finished his soup and looked up to see what else was to eat. He was astonished to see that the plate where the sheep's head had been was now empty. Mother, he said, will you look at Grizel? While we have been eating our soup, she has eaten up the whole sheep's head. Everyone found it funny, especially Sir Patrick when he heard the story. But after a month in the dark prison, Grizel and her mother decided that they should find a better hiding place for Sir Patrick. So they dug a hole under a bed in one of the rooms of the house. The digging had to be done at night, using their hands, so that no one could hear them. Grizel lost the nails on her fingers in doing this. It was not long afterwards that they heard that Sir Patrick's friend Robert Bailey had been put to death by the government. Grizel's father was going to have to escape to Holland, and she worked hard on sewing clothes that would disguise him. On the very morning of his escape, the soldiers came to the house just after he had left, but he got away to England and over the sea safely. Soon Grizel had to join him with the rest of the family because the government took away all that Sir Patrick owned. They stayed in Holland until the persecution ended. Sir Patrick once wrote that even danger is sweet if it is for Christ and country. That was the spirit that helped both Grizel and himself to be so brave in the dangers that they faced. I wonder whether Psalm 91 might have been one of the psalms that Grizel's father found most helpful. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. It also says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. At the end of the psalm it says, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honour him. If we have trusted the Lord to deliver us from the greatest danger, we can trust him in any other danger too. What is the greatest danger for every one of us? It is the danger of our soul. Our sin deserves to be punished by God. Sin in itself is so bad that it deserves the blackness of darkness forever and separation from God and everything that is good. But the Lord Jesus Christ has done everything necessary that our sin will be forgiven when we trust in him alone. The last words of Psalm 91 are a great comfort to those who trust in Christ. They read, I will show him my salvation. Have you seen your need of this great salvation? And have you trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ for it?